Well guys, today is a special day. We are in Salt Lake City. We came to visit 23-0. As you can tell, our uh, tent on the trailer looks a little different now. This is a 23-0 Kabari because Kelly and I can now sleep down here because we got the Truma fridge as you guys saw in this door. Kelly and I can now sleep down here which means we don't need the 87 walkabout for all six of us anymore. So we moved to a Kabari working with Wayne at 23-0 and Matt as well as working with Justin from 23-0 and Expedition Superstore. Um, they have swapped us over to a Kabari. And we are super excited about that. Absolutely love it. But look at this, guys. Look at this view that we got here. Just pop up over the trailer. And there we are. So we're pretty excited that this is a hard shell aluminum tent. We are going to be uh, researching and looking for some panels that we can put up on top of this so that we can have solar panels up on here and run them down into Blaze. We're super excited. We love the fact that we're a lot more aerodynamic, so that's fuel mileage, as you guys know that we full time. It's a big deal. We'll see you guys in a little bit. We are back in the car. So we came into town to visit 23-0. That's why we came here. And, um, Super excited about the conversation we had with them. During our time at Moore Expo, we had a chance to talk with Justin and um, he was really excited about the idea of us working together. And so we came to Utah to further that conversation with him and the rest of his team. And um, we're really excited about um, what has come from that. As you saw at the Moore Expo, uh, we had our Truma fridge delivered to us at the Moore Expo. Yeah. Which means that Kelly and I can officially start sleeping downstairs in the trailer Yay. after seven months. We get to start sleeping down there. So we're super excited about that. Yeah, we have our own bed again, which is awesome. So now that that is happening, we do not need the 87 walkabout anymore that sleeps six people. So we um, have, they swapped us over uh, to the Kabari. Yeah, so the Kabari is their hard shell tent. Um, and it's a queen bed inside. Yep, it's a clam queen, queen size bed. It's amazing. We love it. Um, it's super easy to uh, put up, it's super easy to take down. Um, Even faster than their soft shell tent. Yeah, the soft shell tent was not, I mean, it was definitely easier than the ground tent for sure a lot easier um but this is like you guys <laughs> this is it's, seconds instead of minutes <laughs> it's two latches and you pull it up and you're done yeah. literally you're done and then you put in two poles if you want to and oh and then one support that, strut it, it literally takes minutes if, if that it takes probably we'll time it for you guys but i think it literally takes from unlocking the latches to having it up and done i believe is less than 120 seconds it's, so it's, it's yeah, less, less than, than two, two minutes, minutes for sure um we absolutely love it we have our sleeping bags upstairs now they stay in the tent they, they can actually in stay in the tent now and because of that we know which sleeping bag is ours, so we know where to put our stuff. The reason why that's significant is because all their sleeping bags look the same, and only I understand which sleeping bag is which. Um, and then that way their beds are all in the right places to begin with. All they have to do is pull out their pillows and their fleece blankets. Because we swapped tents, 
we actually were able to get rid of quite a bit of gear because don't forget we had not just the 87 but we had the annex we had the winter lighter we had the extra sheet the extra waterproof sheet we had all the seven metal poles that went with it we had the rain pole or the snow pole whichever way you want to call it but yeah i mean that's that's a lot of weight that we got rid of off of the top of the trailer um, for just a single single hard shell so that's good for us we dropped some weight we became more efficient but honestly after switching to the kabari i'm not gonna lie it feels it feels like home finally which pretty done with. is nice it, it feels like i don't know it doesn't feel like i'm holding my breath for the next thing anymore the next things that are coming are more convenience things um things that would be nice to have not so much need to have so um it, it's it feels good where we're at right now feels good yeah we've got just a little bit more electrical to do and it's not a requirement it's more of a because we want to and functionality thing so we're going to make all of our switches smart and by that i mean you can use your phone to turn them on and off or you can use your voice assistant whichever one you prefer to turn them on and off too which while we're driving down trails at night it's nice to be able to just do it on your phone or tell your assistant to turn on the trail lights and it turns on all four floodlights on the trailer and it turns on the underglow it turns on to white so that we have really good visibility for the forerunner and the trailer so that's what's in the works next that is the next piece and i've actually got all i got most of the stuff i need for that i gotta find some probably 16 or 14 gauge dc wiring uh, I gotta find a spool of it. So, as of right now, we don't have any AC outlets that are wired inside the cabin. Um, the ones on the front box are yeah. wired. The one that is on the left is the one that goes to the Forerunner, and the Forerunner plugs in to that outlet for Black or Blaze. And if the one on the right side is the one that goes up and into the tent for the boys. And so the Forerunner has AC outlets, and then the tent has AC outlets, but the AC outlets inside the trailer, that cable was never run. So we're going to have to probably take the walls apart and yeah. run that cable somehow. We haven't decided if it's worth it, because um, right now we have the Blue Eddy, which sits on the shelf inside the cabin, and we've just been using that for all our power needs. And that gets plugged in through the, um, the, DC. the DC plug that's inside the trailer that did get run. Um, so that's been working for us in that sense. Um, and I think we might just keep doing it that way uh, so that we don't have to take the trailer apart in order to run the wires. And then in the back in the kitchen where we plan on putting another AC outlet, um, I think, again, we made some changes. We purchased some wireless appliances and some bat sorry battery powered appliances and so i don't have anything that plugs in into the back anymore um so i don't know that we're gonna run an ac outlet to the back in the kitchen either because we just don't need it like we thought we did so our fridge is the truma it has the 12 volt dc plug that you can plug into either side and it has an ac outlet on one side and so we just plug that in with 12 volt we have learned, however, that we have to check that 12 volt plug because <laughs> it did come unplugged once, um, unknown to us, and our fridge got a little bit warmer than we would have liked. Um, so we've learned that when we finish travel days, we need to check the plug. Yeah, we don't know what happened with that because the only thing we ever put up there is bread. So I might just have to permanently wire the fridge DC in right there yeah we'll figure it out because the cable is long enough we might just permanently wire it and then we'll just unplug it from the fridge if we have to move it or something so we do however have to cut up our fridge slide um yes. we got to cut it we got to cut it in half or we got to cut it down 
vertically. The yeah, height, we've got to cut that in half so that we can flip it over and have a flat side to put the fridge on and then be able to secure the fridge down on it. Yeah, well, I, the plan originally was that we would just unscrew all the stuff and then flip the tray over and we'd have the flat surface. Unfortunately, because of where the holes are drilled, it goes too far down into the track system um, and bumps into stuff if we flip it upside down. So, so I'm um, gonna find a pneumatic cutoff wheel or borrow one from somebody that we meet up with that has one and do the cutting and then we're good. We are... We're excited about where we're headed. Yeah. Um, so we are leaving Salt Lake City and we are headed to Moab. We, uh, as you it's guys know... Actually only, it's actually only three hours away. So yeah. if you've met us at the shows, you know that we really, really enjoy playing around in Moab. And yes, we do tow Blaze. So we're going to get quite a bit more footage of Blaze on the trails. All right, guys. Um, we are going to finish our drive into Moab and we'll catch you guys once we're there. But this is the end of this video. So thanks for watching and we are on to our next adventure. Next adventure.